Hello, I am Eddie Guerin. I am at the Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center uh, at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, uh, and I direct the Thoracic Oncology Program here. So there are several trials right now that are uh, looking at agents that are directed at either PD-1 or PD-L1. Uh, PD-1, uh, and this of course is a simplification, but is largely found on the surface of, of T cells. And uh, when it complexes with PD-1, PD-L1, excuse me, or PD-L2, uh, generally it leads to a, an inhibition of the T cell activity. And this is an access that at this point is being explored quite significantly uh, by multiple, uh, multiple pharmaceutical companies with agents directed at either uh, PD-1 or PD-L1. Uh, the, the agents that are far along uh, at this point uh, include, uh, but certainly aren't limited to, uh, compounds by Bristol-Myers Squibb. They have reported at this point data on trials looking at both inhibitors of PD-1 and PD-L1. Um, in addition, Merck has a drug that uh, has been, been extensively evaluated as well in the area of lung cancer. Uh, and there is also a drug from Genentech that is targeting PD-L1. The Merck in, uh, drug is a PD-1 inhibitor. The uh, Genentech drug is a PD-L1 inhibitor. These drugs are generally uh, now being tested in studies against, uh, against chemotherapy in previously treated patients. So the field of inhibiting this PD-1 or PD-L1 access is, is, is one where there's a great deal of excitement right now. Um, interestingly, despite that excitement, there is, in many respects, a dearth of, of actual clinical data. So the clinical data is uh, most significant with respect to the BMS compounds. Uh, they tested both a PD-1 and a PD-L1 uh, antibody. Uh, the PD-1 antibody in non-small cell lung cancer had a response rate uh, that was, excuse me, the response rate in that group was 18%. That's, that is where the most, extensive data, the most extensive data to date is with the BMS PD-1 inhi inhibitor, the most extensive and ro most robust. Um, there is also data, uh, as I mentioned, on the PD-L1 inhibitor from Br Bristol-Myers Squibb. Uh, I think that for some people it may be surprising that there is a tremendous amount of enthusiasm about clinical data where to date there, there really has not been a lot that has been reported. And I think that some of that comes from uh, comparing the data that was seen with uh, the BMS trial, uh, at least, as compared to what would be anticipated in the setting of non-small cell lung cancer. Non-small cell lung cancer is a, an extraordinarily prevalent disease. Um, non-small cell lung cancer, or, or I guess lung cancer in general, leads to the same number of deaths as breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, and pancreatic cancer combined. So the numbers there are very similar. Um, unfortunately, it's a very prevalent and, and very fatal disease. The, the anticipated outcome in terms of a response rate uh, in patients who have had prior therapy uh, would be less than 10%. The approved agents in that setting are docetaxel, pemetrexid, and erlotinib. And, um, as I say, the response rates there would be expected to be less than less than 10 percent, and so trials like the trials that have been reported by Bristol Myers Squibb, where you're seeing uh, response rates that are significantly higher than that in patients who have, in many cases, received many prior therapies, um, has led to a significant amount of enthusiasm in the field. So lung cancer is broken into two large categories, of course, small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. The great majority of lung cancer is non-small cell lung cancer. And at this point, uh, at least in the United States, uh, adenocarcinoma is a, the histology that makes up a, the largest chunk of non-small cell lung cancer, um, with then a lesser uh, chunk of that group being squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. In terms of, uh, so, Particularly in the area in the in the histology of adenocarcinoma, there are 
there are multiple different genetic events that are felt in many cases to be drivers of the tumor. Um, the most common mutation that is seen in non-small cell lung cancer, uh, particularly adenocarcinoma, is a mutation in the KRAS gene. Um, however, there are significant populations amongst non-small cell lung cancer patients who have mutations in either the epidermal growth factor receptor gene, uh, EGFR, or the anaplastic lymphoma kinase uh, gene, ALK. Uh, the, the ALK gene, it, it tends to be gene rearrangements that are seen in the setting of non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, one question that comes up is, are the responses to date associated with patients who have uh, these particular genetic abnormalities? At this point, I think that it is just too early to know. Uh, I think that, as I mentioned before, this is an area where we have uh, seen a great deal of clinical activity, excuse me, clinical trial activity and enthusiasm, um, but there is not a lot of clinical data that has come out yet, and I think that uh, that is certainly something that people are going to be looking at as the data comes out, is whether there are predictors based on the genetic abnormalities seen in the tumor, and uh, of course other predictors that would be related to, uh, to the immune system. Uh, so the one that is most extensively been evaluated to date is expression of uh, the PDL1 ligand. Uh, that in the uh, reported data in the New England Journal of Medicine article uh, was uh, clearly disproportionately associated with benefit to the PD1 inhibitor from Bristol-Myers Squibb. So in terms of what we're going to see at the upcoming ASCO uh, meeting in June, in, June in, in Chicago, I think it is a little bit hard to know. My assumption is that there may be some additional data that is uh, available from the Bristol-Myers Squibb compound. Uh, as far as other compounds, it is not clear um, what data is going to be available from other companies' agents. Uh, I think that it just depends where they are in, in their cycle of the trials. Uh, many of the early phase studies are, are ongoing uh, and continue to be ongoing for these agents. Uh, with those phase one studies, in many respects, I think that people will, in some cases, be looking at um, particular patient populations, uh, perhaps based on molecular abnormalities, perhaps based on clinical scenarios. And so I think that at ASCO, there will be some fleshing out of the data that has been seen to date. There may be some uh, reports on, on additional compounds that are being tested that target the PD-1, PD-L1 axis. Um, I think that we are still going to be dealing with a lot of early phase data uh, at this point.